Okay, hello everybody, welcome. The purpose of this video is to talk about absolute values of negative numbers. And actually, um, there's another little thing about negative numbers which we're going to talk about in this video because it is going to be useful um, for some limit computations and it's actually related. So uh, here we go. So what I want you to do actually is just take a moment on your own to, um, to fill in this table. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, first fill in the table and then pause to see if uh, you can see any patterns between what's happening in certain columns. What I really suggest you do is actually treat the positive numbers a little differently from the negative numbers. And you can just group zero with the positive numbers for now. But take a look at these bottom rows and see if you see any patterns, any, any recurring themes inside uh, these columns down here at the bottom. And so here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pause the video or something. I'm actually going to count down to 10 in the video. So if you think you need more than 10 seconds, just pause the video. I'll do a countdown, and then we'll fill in the table and talk about it. So here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, and so these are the entries I got in the table. Um, absolute value of a number is going to be a positive number. So if, you, if your number is negative, just switch that number for a positive number. I think this column is completely fine for everybody. Uh, this one, you're just supposed to take the negative of the original number. So all these positive numbers become negative. Zero is its own negative, so nothing happens there. And these negative numbers, well, you had a negative originally plus that additional minus sign. And so those minus signs should cancel out. And over here, these numbers should be positive. Uh, the next column over, you're just supposed to square the number, and whether you square a negative number, like negative 1 or negative 3, or you square a positive number, like 3, you should always get a positive number once you square. And since you have a positive number, now you can take the square root over here. Um, and when you take the square root, I hope you didn't get as the answer plus or minus. Now, um, there is a sense in plus or minus for square rooting, but that's when you square root both sides of an equation. When you just talk about the expression square root of something, then you only take the positive square root. Anyway, I hope this is the table that you got. And now here are two patterns that I want you to notice. Um, first of all, I've highlighted uh, right here um, only in the rows corresponding to negative numbers. And you can see how this would continue. But in these two columns, the numbers completely match. They're the same number. And so you get this fact. I mean, it's just right out of this, uh, this table this that you just made. But if x is negative, or if x is smaller than 0, then absolute value of x, that's the number inside this column, is the same thing as negative x, which is the number in this column. And this is only true when you have a negative number for x, right? So the, like these negative numbers here. And it's not true up here. These numbers are different. And when you stare at this fact, it looks a little weird at first because you stare at this and go, wait, absolute value of x? Absolute value is supposed to be a positive number. And it is. It is a positive number here because negative x, when x is a negative number, then you have negative, negative a positive number. So this thing is actually, is actually a positive number. There's one other fact to notice here, and so I've highlighted now this column and then this last column. And again here, the numbers are the same, right? So um, if x, but if x is a negative number, then these numbers are the same as these numbers over here. So you get this fact as well. So if x is uh, less than or equal to zero, then s the square root of the square of x. Right, or the square root of x squared is equal to negative x. And again, this fact looks funny because you think, I mean, and it's easy to natural to think, when you square root something, you should get something positive. Right? And so that minus sign that you see here makes you think, well, maybe the right side isn't positive. But it is actually positive because x itself is negative, and so you're negating a negative number to get a positive number. OK, so just in summary, there are these two facts again that we just saw. Um, and this fact is found in the book on page 16 uh, in a red box. There are two formulas. And that, that second formula, um, in the book, however, it's, it's with an A. But you can just do the same thing with an X and get this fact here. Um, this other, the second fact is, is found inside a particular solution of a problem on page 134. And both of these facts are going to get used to compute and simplify all kinds of limits. and that's it. Thanks for watching. Please watch the companion to this video, uh, which will actually use these facts to compute some limits.